Limerick, yeah. where Ender Muldoon was absent and, and also Fergal Doherty and, and particularly in terms of the midfield battle I think it's going to be uh, play a big factor sure, in, yeah. in the decision of in the possible outcome of the game because the least midfield pairing are, are, are excellent and, and to have Fergal yeah. Doherty back there for Derry is a huge bo bonus and yeah. we expect a big Kevin game McCloy from him. is another one this year that has come in and played yes. very well at full back. Mm -hmm. Great player. Sean Marty Lockhart at centre back. That's a good spine Lord down Lyle, the middle. Yeah. Like, that's a quite a good full back line, Kevin McGuffey and Kevin McCloy and Gerald O'Kane. That's a good full mm. back line, you know. They're quite solid in the back. They have the two two lads up full forward and like in the Muldoon. I don't know how fit he is, he tore his hamstring, right? It's yeah, hard to know how fit he is. Yeah. 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 But he's around yeah. the square edge. You don't have to be yeah. complicated. Well, you don't maybe have to be, <coughs> where he's playing, he doesn't have to be super fit, but yeah. you know, he, yeah. needs to, he needs to be sharp, I think, sure. which is yeah. important. Um, he is a big threat and he's capable of scoring goals, but Enda hasn't been playing that well this year. He's, yeah. a, he's an immense player for Derry, but it yeah. hasn't been going for him this year. So, yeah. really, if, if well, Derry are to win, they need a big game from him. Today's the day he might turn it all around. You never know. Well, let's hear from the rival managers for this first match. Mickey Moran is the Derry boss, Mick O'Dwyer, the man in charge in leash, and they've been talking to Jim Carney. Everybody's reported fit, and we selected on Thursday night, so everybody plays as selected. Now, the four changes that you made during the week with fellas coming back, Mickey, could, you, could I just ask you to go over those for us, please? Well, it came down to the wire after the last training session on Thursday night, and uh, Jared O'Kane got the call over Michal Kelly. Uh, it was a tight decision. Patrick Kelly got the call over Paul Walson. Another tight decision. We were looking at Enda and Fergal Doherty uh, this last couple of weeks and they proved their fitness to start, and uh, they go in. John McRae moves to left half forward. Young Gavin Donaghy, unfortunately, played well against Limerick. He's... Uh, picked up an ankle injury and he was ruled out so that's a team we select but we're happy with what we have on the bench to come on and big expectations now mickey from your followers and from yourself i'm sure well uh, we, we're just focused on on the game on leash uh, um, a tough task ahead uh, should have won leinster and uh, their own words after that they weren't they took the positives out of that game and they they realized they have a great team and a great chance so if we match their work rate and their effort and commitment, uh, which we'll have to, then you know we have a chance. But uh, it'll be an almighty effort required. Mick, thanks for coming out to talk to us. Uh, we're just anxious to find out now how your team is, and we believe, first of all, that you have a change to announce. Yes, we have Barry Brennan, who uh, got injured here the last day playing against Dublin. He pulled a hamstring, and we thought he'd be ready for today, but he started it again on Tuesday night, so he's not ready to play. But Shane Cook is coming in, and Shane is a very experienced footballer, and he has played for Leash through the league, and he came on there one day, and of course, he was sent off, but he's all ready to go anyway, and he's in great form, and he's playing great football here in the Dublin Championship, and we're hoping that he will do a good job today for us. And how are the rest of the lads making? How have they been now in the last couple of weeks? You know, what's the, the mind of the Leash players been like? Well, we're hoping they're OK. We have worked pretty well on their mental attitude to the game and I think they're in pretty good shape. Physically, they're in wonderful shape. We've played a lot of football since we were here last and I think football is the one thing that will bring players on and they look to be in very good shape and they look very good on Tuesday night last and we know we're taking on a very good Derry team. There are a lot of those players won a minor All-Ireland in 2001 and uh, they've had good success at underage level. So I think this will be a very, very good game today. It will be a close one and I think... Uh, one way or the other, a little bit of luck, I think, will decide it. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. There will be extra time in both of these games today, by the way, if required. We're going to take a short break here at Croke Park. We're back after that with the first of our football qualifiers. That's Derry versus Leash. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. I'm going to make him an offer again with you. The Godfather Trilogy. My offer is this. Nothing. Starts with The Godfather tonight at 9.20 on RTE2. Our needs change as we go through life. Life stage choices from VHI Healthcare is a new alternative in health insurance that accounts for these changes. With five plans to choose from, you will always have the best cover for your stage in life, whatever stage it is. Life stage choices from VHI Healthcare. When you need us, we're there. <laughs> okay, girls, we're here. Ah, uh, you are from Ireland, yeah, eh? Yeah. Nice country! 
Isn't it strange how some things seem to cost more than you expect when you're abroad? With the new Vodafone Travel Promise, using your mobile won't be one of them. Simply select the Vodafone network, pay a 79 cent connection fee, and the rest of your call will be charged at the same per minute rate you pay at home. Vodafone, how are you? TriFlow Total Metal Care is so easy to use because it's drip resistant. So whether you want to paint a black railing or a golden gate, TriFlow with active rust stoppers protects for up to five years. TriFlow Total Metal Care paints rust out of the picture. Loyalty, club, honour, dreams. We can't leave it in the dressing room. We have to take this out onto the field. This is our chance for greatness. The future of our game depends on what we do now, but you have to go out and do it. In that way, we share it all together. The winning, the losing, the heartache and the enjoyment. We're all one any given Sunday. Gaelic Telecom is a great way for you to support your club at no cost to you. Save up to 20% on line rental, 40% on calls, and your club gets 15% of your call spent. Call 1890-929-422. Why wouldn't you do it? That's 1890-929-422 now. And save this Sunday's Irish News of the World. Get your free DVD of Ireland's greatest Premier League stars. Great goals, great saves. Trunction Tackles, a great Irish footballing feast. Don't miss your free DVD of Ireland's greatest Premier League stars. Only inside this weekend's Irish News of the World. If you have children, or are planning to, Family Plan Plus is the tailored healthcare package for you. Life stage choices from VHI Healthcare. When you need us, we're there. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. Hello and welcome back again to the programme. Now before we get into our action here in the first game, we have a competition for you and a chance for you to win two tickets for next weekend's football quarterfinals here at Croke Park. A compliment of RTE and the Bank of Ireland. There's overnight accommodation included in that and you'll also be entered into a further draw for tickets to the All-Ireland Final itself. Now, just pick your man of the match from the Derry Leash game, ring through to 1515 717181 or text MATCH to 57111. If your selection matches ours, you're into the chance. Details for Northern Ireland also on your screen there. Now, RTE and the Bank of Ireland offer you the very same prize with the second match, that's Kerry versus Mayo. Again, pick your man of the match, uh, phone through to this time 1515 717182 or text match to 57111. And again, you're in with the chance to win tickets to next weekend's quarterfinals, overnight accommodation in Dublin, and entry into a further draw for our Ireland football final tickets. And by the way, you can also get all of those details on Airtel page 193. Yeah, the first match coming up very shortly here at Croke Park. But let me go back to Anthony and Tony again about the second game very briefly, gentlemen, because obviously, Tony, there are issues for Tyrone uh, in this second game with suspensions yeah. and so forth. Huge. I suppose they're the most unluckiest team in Ireland with the, the way things happened the last day. If you were to pick two two players, uh, Peter Canavan and Stephen O'Neill would be the two players yeah. you would choose to take them off because they're the only real scoring class threats they have up there. Now, Ryan McManoon was called up before the CDC and, in my opinion, rightly, he got a suspension. No, he's missing today. I know they appealed it and the suspension was turned on. Again, I think they were right to do that because after the, the throw in Armagh game the last day, let's call it, it was the kind of the 9-11 for the football championship in 2005. Whatever happened before, you could get away with more than likely. And people did, Kieran. Yeah. We didn't get away. But the rules changed after that day because people said, look, we don't want football like that. Yeah, so yeah. Look, he was just the next guy up and he got, it happens in games, sure. it happens. So from now on, all the rules are changed and if yeah. you're called up, you're going to get a hammering. Yeah. Think about something like this, Anthony, is when, when things like this happen to a team, I remember it happened to the Galway Hurlers in 1989, you can either respond to it or you can let it get into your head and it can upset you. Yeah, that's right. I think, I think most teams would look on it as, as there's been an injustice done to one of our players and I think what it does, it galvanises players' thoughts and and you, you try and use that as a motivational tool to your own benefit. And yeah. I think that certainly Mickey Hart and I know Joe Kernan will be using the, the loss of those players as, as another reason to go sure. out and, and yeah. to succeed. And that's really the only way you can look at it as a player. You don't want to be you know, saying, looking at it in a negative sense. You've got yeah. to try and use it to your own benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about Monaghan? I mean, it looks like on paper like a big task for Monaghan today. But they've been yeah, playing you know, since the league. Yeah, it's, it's, a big, the league. It's, it's a big task for them, surely. Um, you know, but they are, you know, they are capable of playing decent football, and they've progressed nicely through the qualifiers without 
they haven't really beaten anyone sure. of any really sig significance other yeah. than Wexford and Wexford were very very poor that day so um, Monaghan you'd, I think for them to, to win they're going to have to maybe score a goal or two and, and, and win a lot of play around uh, positioning around the middle it's a big big ask but you, you really would have to expect your own to win sure one. yeah well as I said that's our second game today the one we're concentrating obviously now is this one coming up between Terry and Leash Anthony who's it for you? Uh, I'll uh, I'm going with Derry. Um, I think they've been around longer, they're more consistent and anyone that has Paddy, Paddy Bradley, probably the best forward in the country at the moment, scoring seven or eight points every ga game and now with Indy Muldoon back in the full forward line to help him out, they have a very good midfield, Fergal Doherty back in there, a steady back line. I think they're set up very well and mm. unfortunately like they've been beat by Kerry Armand Throne the last three qualifiers. Very hard, like the yeah. Love Ireland and champions after the, the three boys. So they're there, thereabouts at the end of the season. They're priced, I think, at a 25 to 1. If yeah. you're a betting man, not a bad gamble, even though they're on the hardest side of the draw. Yeah. Armagh will have something to say for about sure, that. Yeah. So, you know. yeah. But a good team. Good team. Well, obviously, the other entity is hoping that you're right with all that assessment yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah, I think I think uh, we'll go with, along with what Tony was saying there. But I think uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how Leash cope with the defeat against Dublin. This is the first time they've played in the qualifiers, so they're still coming into this game off the back of a, of a very, very disappointing uh, result that day, yeah. um, losing the provincial final. Mikko was talking about spending a lot of time working on their mental preparation, mm -hmm. so it'd just be interesting to see, certainly in the opening phases of the game, whether or not Leash are really up for this. Yeah, well, that's the very big question, and I suppose one final point about it is, you know, they went in looking dead in the water at half-time, yeah. you know, the other game, and the, or the Dublin game came mm -hmm. up the second half and they played a storm, but let's see what happens with them today. Anyway, our commentary team for this first game is Darren Maloney with Martin Carney. Michael, thank you very much indeed. A very pleasant afternoon here at Croke Park. Very humid, not a breath of wind inside the stadium. But the one thing that really strikes you when you look around is the lack of people here. It's filling up now as we uh, as the time goes towards the throw-in. But uh, very, very few people in here around half an hour ago, getting bigger all the time. But we're looking forward to what will hopefully be a great afternoon. Let's take a check on the Derry team first of all. Mickey Moran has gambled on the fitness of Ender Muldoon and Fergal Doherty for this one. They both missed the win over Limerick in round three. Muldoon was out with a hamstring problem. Colin Devlin is out now on the bench. Doherty hasn't played since injuring his ankle against Down but he returns at midfield with Johnny McBride now in the half forwards. Gavin Donaghy loses out. Paul McFlynn didn't make the team because of injury. Podrick Kelly is named at left half back. Paddy Bradley has once again had an incredible year. He scored 110 against Monaghan earlier in the championship. He is key for Derry this afternoon. Now, the big news from Leash this week was the decision to drop Bina McDonald from the first 15. McDonald made an amazing recovery from his terrible leg break just over a year ago, but has struggled to regain his form. 18-year-old Donny Brennan gets a start after making a big impression when coming on against Dublin in the Leinster final. Barry Brennan was named at full forward, but was struggling with a hamstring injury. He has been replaced by Shane Cook. Ross Munnerley, always so important to Leash, but Noel Garvin has been playing superb football this year. He'll need to be at his very best today against a powerful Derry midfield pairing. They are the teams. We'll be back shortly. The tax man's taken all my dough. And Funny how we wait all year for it to get hot. Just so as we can cool down again. Bomber's original cider. Time dedicated to you. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. Welcome back to Croke Park. Paddy Russell from County Tipperary is the referee for this round four qualifier. Martin Carney here with me. Martin, such a, a tough one to call. Very hard one to call indeed, Dara. Like on one, t on one hand, Leash are a very refreshing, vibrant side. Derry, bigger physically, playing very well, progressing, you know, well since they were knocked out by Armagh uh, in the qualifiers. Uh, they have the best defence in the country as far as I'm concerned. The, the target man par excellence in, P in Paddy Bradley. And I feel I just give them a hesitant vote to win it. Derry won the toss, they play from left to right in the first half, no wind advantage at all to speak of. And here comes Podrick Clancy of Leash, the beaten Leinster finalist, which Leash team will turn up today. Kevin Fitzpatrick is their captain, still concerns about his fitness. Possibilities for them here, Donny Brennan. Brennan bottled up and he's lost control of the ball, taken away by Patsy Bradley. Now there's a Leash player down injured, it is Donny Brennan. Ball out of play, treatment on straight away for Brennan, who looks to be in real trouble. 
Yeah, I didn't see what happened there, Dara, but he certainly was prone. Uh, he was trying to, I think, make a run in to support an attack, but I'm not sure if he got taken out of it or not, but he certainly seems to be in trouble. Member of the Knockbeg College team that won the All-Ireland earlier this year. Concern for Mick O'Dwyer already. Yeah, of course, Tony Brennan is such a small player physically, and it's against that. The likes of Kevin, Kevin McGuckey and Kevin McCloy in the full back line for Derry are very, very uh, imposing players. So if you have a collision between Little and Large, I don't think Little's going to come out on top. Well, he's back sitting up now anyway. Big, heavy collision in there. Well, we did mention it at the top, but uh, the small crowd inside Croke Park, noticeable. You can see normally those seats at the changing rooms over on the far side are uh, filled straight away, but large, empty spaces around. Brennan is back to his feet. Padre Clancy, very involved. Here's Tom Kelly. Kelly drills it in, looking for the first point. The crowd like it. Superb score. And well, they've been saying Tom Kelly hasn't been playing all that well for Leash. Didn't have a great Leinster final. That is a super start for him and for his side. Yeah, lovely little one to that time again. I think it was Pori Clancy. Gave the ball. Kelly coming up with support. Struck it with great confidence of the outside of his boot. Difficult score to execute, but from distance puts, puts Leach, uh, Leach ahead. Haven't started well in two of their three championship matches so far this year against Offaly and Dublin. Of course, we're flying all day against Kildare. That's a positive opening for them. Paul Murphy. Free to Derry. Looks to switch it over on the far side. Rooney is picking up Paddy Bradley, the Derry captain. Bradley can score from almost anywhere. Same could be said for Johnny McBride. Wearing nine but playing at half forward. Here's Enda Muldoon. He'll drift all over the place. Bradley again. Super blocked down. Noel Garvin got his hand to that. Indeed, it was Colin Begley. Good block down by the halfback. Muldoon drills it in. Mark Lynch. Billy Sheehan. Clancy. Podrick McMahon. Billy Sheehan. Fitzpatrick having trouble. And a little altercation off the ball between Fitzpatrick and Doherty. Sheehan moves it forward. Chris Conway, Shane Cook. Cook steadies himself. Oh dear, needed a little bit longer. Donny Brennan will not catch. Well done, Kevin McGuckin. McGuckin and McCloy have had superb championships for Derry. Here's Paul Murphy. Muldoon, the movement from him. It's Aidan Fenley who's picking him up. And it's a free into Derry. Well, we've only had about four minutes of the game so far, Dara, but it's, it's set off at a blistering place. Great football from both sides, great urgency to the game, great movement of the ball, and both teams trying to play football. Very encouraging. You just see Aidan Fenley picking up Enda Muldoon. We were told that Joe Higgins would look after Paddy Bradley and Darren Rooney would pick up Enda Muldoon and they would stay with them all day. Man markers, not something that Mick O'Dwyer normally goes for. Now, Ender Muldoon has only scored 1-5 in the championship. Hasn't had his best year in the Derry Colours. This to level it up. Well taken. A point apiece after four and a half minutes. It's not bad. Well, that's a fine score, actually, by Muldoon. Do his confidence a lot of good, because the last day I saw him playing against Armagh, he was totally off form. But having come off an injury, that's a very good start for him. That was Podrick McMahon was pushed after he played the ball forward. Donny Brennan getting no change at all out of McGuckin. Just can't get to it. Fergal Doherty, first 15, 20 minutes will be crucial for him and that problem ankle. Paddy Bradley, he's got space again on Rooney. Second time in the game. Bradley, one way, then the other. He can score with the right boot as well, but just not on this occasion. But he's getting the space and getting away from Darren Rooney, who wouldn't be the quickest player in the country. Yeah, and I think what's happening there actually is Muldoon is drifting out a little bit, giving the space in that corner to Paddy Bradley for the midfielders to put the ball into. And again, there's great movement on his part to get himself in position to receive the ball from his outside players. So Darren Rooney's under a bit of pressure at the moment. Big kick out from Fergal Byron. 
Garvin goes up after it and claims it under pressure from Patsy Bradley. Todrick McMahon and Colin Begley appear. Well, they're now over on the same side. McMahon is now coming over to the left. They had switched for a moment. Tom Kelly. Look how deep Donny Brennan is having to come to get the ball, but he's got it. Here's Ross Munnerly. Been picked up by Podrick Kelly. Kelly out of the game. Munnerly with the fist. Leash lead by two points to one. Fabul, the great score that time, Dara, I must say. And again, there's the secret. I think that's the way Leash can unlock this Derry team. Playing the ball wide to the flanks, getting the two little runners, uh, both Brennan and Munnerly, onto the ball in space. That's a very, very good finish from Munnerly after a lovely bit of approach play. Brilliant against Dublin, and he's made a very good start to this match. Ross Munnerly burst onto the scene in 2003. Seems to have been around a lot longer. Yes, and Pori Kelly actually is marking uh, Munnerly directly at the moment. Garvin goes flying after that. Johnny McBride was deep, couldn't get to it. Colin Begley forward, here's Munnerly again. Now Brennan is free ahead of him, free in. Kevin McGuckin of Derry giving it away. He's causing problems already. And again, Dara, we just mentioned it a moment or two ago. <laughs> a very, very big player, the likes of Kevin McGuckey, and coming into contact with small physical players of, uh, like Munley and Brennan. And when there's contact made, there's going to be freeze given away by the, on the part of the defender. So they need to be very disciplined in how they tackle. Chris Conway will be picked up by Jared O'Kane, as you can see. This familiar setup for Ross Bonnelly. 117 in Championship 2005. He's going to have to wait to make it 118. That's their first wide. Gillis finding his man. This is Patsy Bradley. Oh, and Bradley just couldn't hang on to that, and he was pushed over by Tom Kelly, Paddy's younger brother. Really looking forward to playing in Croke Park today. Won the free for his team. And while we were watching that, Leash have made a big mistake and allowed Paddy Bradley in. Rooney's there with him. Wide. That's great tackling that time by Darren Rooney, in all fairness to him. And again, Darren, what is very interesting is the way the Derry full forward line structured themselves for that free kick. They lined each other out, one in front of the other, and then broke to the sides. But that time Rooney gets between Bradley and the goals, forces him out over the sideline. That's defending at its best. And that will do Rooney's confidence the world of good after a shaky start. Derry clever with their movement in that full forward line. Is a massive kick from Byron Garvin and Fergal Doherty. Colin Begley now. Another one of these extremely talented former miners. They've all Ireland minor medals all over the place. Most of this team. Here's Tom Kelly. Designs on a senior one in 2005, though. Kelly breaks the challenge of Sean Marty Lockhart. Taken by Barry Gillis. Fergal Doherty driving forward. Enda Muldoon is his target. It's Aidan Fenley who's marking him. Muldoon just tried to use his body to collect the ball. It's gone Leisha's way up. Oh, that's very careless. Gerard O'Kane very far forward. Here's Mark Lynch. Enda Muldoon blocked down by Garvin. Collected by Kevin Fitzpatrick. The loose centre forward in a very deep position, almost in his own full back line. Yeah, and on two occasions there, Leash have been guilty of just a little bit of carelessness coming out of the defence. Again, a great block down that time by the midfielder, but Noel Garvin coming back and will do it. And Paddy Braddy will fancy this. Just through the 10 minute mark. Still the pace of the game pretty high. Fergal Doherty. Conway hanging on to him, angled better for Bradley. Superb, absolutely brilliant. Hardly had to look, he was just so confident it was going to go over. Two points apiece. 
Yeah, Mikkel won't be very pleased with that one, actually. He was beseeching some of his players to pick up Fergal Doherty for that line ball. Doherty got the ball, gave it back to Bud Bradley, and Bradley, in that kind of form, won't miss. Great score. Clancy, it's punched away from him by Patsy Bradley. Here's Owen Bradley. Remember, remember his goal against Down and Yuri in round three of the qualifiers, round two indeed. That was a pullback by Tom Kelly. Second time he's fouled Owen Bradley. Certainly that Owen Bradley, the younger of the two Bradleys, is forging a great reputation for himself and causing a bit of problem that time to Tom Kelly, who found it hard to get back to him. And he's been shown the uh, black card by Paddy Russell. So this to put Derry in front for the first time in this round four qualifier. The winners will play Armagh. Stolen a yard or two. That's just going to swing in. It's not going to come back far enough, though. Wide number three. Fergal Byron has been by far the busier of the two goalkeepers. Fergal Doherty putting pressure on that ankle already. Seems to be holding up pretty well. Noel Garvin. Billy Sheehan, the Kerry man in the leash 15. Now Paul Murphy hasn't got the pace to go with Sheehan, who's very, very quick. Still has it. Now closed down by Francis Michael Downey. Chris Conway switches it. Look at Todrick McMahon completely free. They've got to get a score under this leash. McMahon slipped. Oh, he was completely free. That was a wonderful bit of vision that time by the corner forward Chris Conway to, uh, to pick up McMahon on the far wing. And his composure deserted him, I think, at the last moment. Although I think there was a jersey pull just on the point of impact as he, as he shot. Well, what a pass, though, from Conway. Wonderful vision, but again, a lovely bit of drifting into space by Porrick McMahon. Paul Murphy is with Podrick McMahon. That's been given away. Kevin McCloy. Sean Marty Lockhart loves the freedom of centre-half back. Francis McEldowney to Owen Bradley, moving this forward well. Kelly not too far away from Bradley. Another three. Three in a row. Three times Bradley has got the ball. Kelly has fouled him on all three occasions. Now this is for Muldoon. Byron is there. Square ball. Yeah, I thought a little bit harsh that time because Brad, uh, I think at end of Bradley seemed to be, or end of Muldoon seemed to be, to be drifting into the square as the ball came in and I felt that score should have been left stand. Joe Higgins. Had a torrid start to the Leinster final. Recovered well from there. Here's Ross Munnelly. Donny Brennan has space this time on McGuckin. The angle is difficult. Munnelly again. Shane Cook waiting inside. Billy Sheehan there to the break. Kind to Derry. Kevin McGuckin. Now Jared O'Kane. He's playing at cornerback. Many people in Derry feel he should be playing in the half back line where Francis Michael Downey is into the space, Mark Lynch makes a move towards that, it's a free to Leash, Lynch was hanging on to Joe Higgins, he's going to receive a ticking as well, Todrick McMahon, not good distribution, easy for Fergal Doherty, Patsy Bradley, Tom Kelly for Leash, Aidan Fennell, very underrated player, Todrick Clancy, Kevin Fitzpatrick, again in that deep position, really testing out that troublesome groin. Noel Garvin, four points he's scored for Leash in the Championship so far this year. Ross Munnelly, taking a lot out of this, having to work hard. Derry with plenty back to defend this. Chris Conway couldn't hang on to it. Now Derry will pour forward with Fergal Doherty. Francis McEldowney, he changed the ball from hand to hand. 
Yes, and actually in that case there, Derry had 10 players back behind the ball with that leash attack, and leash really need to keep the ball moving very quickly because when they get involved in the short hand passing, they allow the Derry blanket defence to impose itself, and, you know, they're so physically strong that leash will find it very difficult to penetrate them once the uh, game has slowed down. Nicky Moore and the Derry manager. Seen all this before, they had a great spell in the qualifiers last year, got all the way to the All-Ireland semi-final, only to be beaten by the eventual... All-Ireland champions Kerry by six points in the semi. Ross Munnerly haven't had a score in this match in six minutes. That's very high, but it's wide again. Third leash wide. Yeah, there may not have been a score, there, but both teams are expending great energy, trying to play attractive, enterprising football, moving the ball to the wings very effectively. And all in all, it's been a very uh, enjoyable game, and the leash play certainly has the imprint of Mick O'Dwyer on it. Just while we have the opportunity, let's uh, remind you of the RTE Bank of Ireland Man of the Match competition. The number's there on your screen. You can call us or text us. And the numbers for Northern Ireland as well. Again, call or text. Remind you of those numbers a little bit later on. Tom Kelly, that's a risky ball with Paddy Bradley about, but Garvin a safe pair of hands. Darren Rooney carries an injury into this match after injuring his ankle playing for the Leash Hurlers. Aidan Fennelly now has Johnny McBride for company. Ran into traffic, Derry getting players back to try and crowd Leash out. Brennan to Monnelly, it's lovely football, need this one, they've got it. After a couple of bad wides, he's recovered, punches the air in delight. Leash lead again. That's their first score in 11 minutes. Well, you won't get a better score than that in this year's championship. The most beautiful piece of teamwork, lovely uh, retaining of possession in the back line, a great foot pass, eventually the hand pass setting up Monley and a great score from a difficult angle. But the teamwork was of the top quality in that case, Dara. Two out of three for Leash. Sean Marty Lockhart is now picking up Ross Munnerly, there's a surprise. Loose possession, free to leash, the player on the ground has been held. They lead by three points to two. Corey Clancy again, they switch it all the way across. Donny Brennan way out in front of McGuckin, but McGuckin coming back hard at him, too hard for the referee. Second time he's fouled Donny Brennan, it's a free in. And McGuckin could be in trouble is yeah. in trouble but what sort probably be given a, i'd say a black mark for that one i'd say dara but again it's a case of a very big strong man marking a smaller lad and it gets him a yellow card for his troubles yellow card that as a cornerback is not what you want in a match of such importance after 18 and a half minutes yeah, and the, the actual positioning of Donny Brennan is interesting. He's playing right in front of the goals for the entirety of the half so far, and again, moving out to the wings from there. But uh, the other thing, as you said already, Sean Marty Lockhart now has gone man-to-man -man Ross Munley, and you couldn't ask for a stickier marker, actually, than Sean Marty. So that should be a great contest for the remainder of the game. Munley to give them a four to cushion he's pulled it missed it on the near side as well he will not be happy with that Ross Monolith it often brings me back to the situation I'm talking about it for years Daryl why don't players carry a place kicker who can strike a ball off the ground from a distance like that much more uh, guaranteed I think to bring about a score anxious times for both managers great shot of Miko just throwing his arms out to his side as if to say well I can't believe he missed it 3-2, a lot of tension, Noel Garvin of Leash lets it off to Colin Begley, Tordred Clancy. Clancy Bradley trying to make a challenge, Clancy still going, he's a big strong player, two around him, Billy Sheehan. Sheehan breaks the cover, away from Francis McEldowney, nobody in there except Fergal Doherty. Leash just losing their way a touch. Mark Lynch in a very deep position. That's Colin Begley who's with it. Owen Bradley. Tom Kelly 
fouled him three times. He's got a ticking. That's four fouls now. Kelly's going to get a yellow. I see he's going to get a yellow after that one. Again, a bit unlucky that time. I think Owen Bradley ducked as Tom Kelly came into him and drew the foul. But certainly Tom Kelly has to be a little bit more disciplined because he's due to get a yellow card now. Bradley loves to run at players. and There's the yellow for Tom Kelly. We'll have to be careful, just like Kevin McGuckin of Derry. Paddy Bradley takes out Ender Muldoon. Joe Higgins standing just behind him. Muldoon is blocked down by Joe Higgins. Begley unable to hang on to it. Here's Owen Bradley. Kelly coming to him again. Bradley trying to make space, just ran out of time, ran out of options, misplaced the hand pass, and Aiden Fenley on hand for Leash. That will give them a boost. Here's Joe Higgins. Everybody getting drawn into huge there's lumps of players from both sides all over the place. Lots of space. Kevin McCloy. Johnny McBride taking the hit. Physical stuff coming into it now. That's a dairy free. Yeah, well, it was a fair hit that time, to be fair, from Joe Higgins on Johnny McBride. Shoulder to shoulder, feet on the ground. Again, good, strong, physical shot. Working hard, Kevin Fitzpatrick. Johnny McBride. Two-man full forward line. Wait inside. It's just too strong. Byron takes it easily, now Noel Garvin misplaced it intercepted by Patsy Bradley Francis McEldowney Fergal Doherty Doherty just hit by Begley after he kicked the ball Muldoon didn't fancy the shot Paul Murphy does, Murphy great point their first in 12 minutes level for the third time He's had a good year as well, Paul Murphy. It was a good year again. It's a very low-scoring game, Dara, but I must say, a hugely enjoyable game. A great effort being expended by both players. And again, it must be said, the standard of football is very, very good today. Billy Sheehan. Sheehan has space. There's nobody coming near it. Must be something at the end of this for Leash. There could be Shane Cook. Cook for Leash. Goal chance. He's dragged it wide. And Chris Conway free to his left. Seem to be caught in two minds as to what to do. That's exactly it, and Mikko was raging about that. He didn't seem to kind of know whether to put it on his right foot or in his left foot. Eventually took it on uh, his left foot and put it wide. The right foot was the ball to try there initially when he had the opening, went on to his stronger left foot and made a mess of it, unfortunately, from a leash point of view. Well, Leash have had problems with goals all year. Of course, they got that famous late one against Offaly, but that's their only one in the championship this year. Got a couple in the league, and one of those was scored by Fergal Byron, the goalkeeper, from a penalty. Will they rack up enough points to beat Derry, though? And book a place in the quarter-final. Here's Johnny McBride. All tied up again. McBride running straight at Colin Begley. He's won the free. Was he hanging on? to the leash half back them. Well, I think that's one of the new ruses I think that we've seen in the last couple of yeah. years where the forward holds onto the back's arm, draws in the free uh, to be fair about the referees are falling for it all the time. Well, the referee looking head on, but you could see Johnny McBride holding Begley's arm behind his back almost and then pulling the defender down, so it shouldn't be a free. Yes, yeah, a hard one for a referee to be fair to adjudicate Indeed. on. Well, do for Derry. Oh, it's up, off the upright and it's gone wide. That's a disappointing miss. Maybe justice has been done in a way. It stays at three points apiece. Yeah, and both teams will be very disappointed with some of the misses they've had, both from freeze and from, uh, you know, open, uh, open play situations in the last while. But again, as we can see from the stats, it's a very, very even game in terms of possession. And on the scoreboard too, Level three times so far. Cordrick Clancy, Mark Lynch to Johnny McBride. McBride with space will want it on the left boot, will he? Paddy Bradley not fussy, left or right. Favours the left, of course. Yeah, and again, you can see that Johnny McBride is looking for Bradley to hand him off the ball in that situation, but you've got to credit Darren Rooney how closely he is attending to Paddy Bradley. And again, the pressure that was put on Bradley as he kicked that was, uh, was why the ball went by. Today only the second meeting of Derry and Leash in the championship. First was in 2001, it was played in Cavan. And Derry won five wides apiece. 
pretty level, isn't it? Leash are going to make a change. Shane Cook, I think, is about to come off. Gary Kavanagh getting ready. Derry looking to go in front. Tordrick Kelly, very fine score. Attacking from half back, and this is one of the things that the Derry supporters are concerned about. They reckon the half backs don't get up front enough. Well, Kelly did it there. And I think now that he's free from the Sharks of trying to run after Ross Monley, he's managing to get himself into more attacking positions. Gary Kavanagh in for Shane Cook. Cook, a late addition to the Leash team. Derry now lead for the first time in this match. I think maybe Shane Cook is paying the penalty for missing that sitter in a, a couple of moments ago. And no room for sentiment at this level. Kevin Fitzpatrick getting ready to take this free. Leash trying to get things moving up front. Kavanagh screaming for the ball straight away, being picked up by McCloy. Good battle, Donny Brennan onto the loose pass. Brennan wide again. Yeah, again, a difficult score that one to execute. Running away from the goals on your left foot from the left side takes nearly a miracle for that to go over the bar. There's Mikko, will not be happy. They're racking up the wides, Leash. They're up to six now. Well, they're saying in Leash that this team really needs to beat a side from Ulster. Yeah, that's true, Daryl. Like the last couple of years losing to our man, Tyrone, again, at, at, around this stage, it's kind of a little bit disappointing with a team with such pedigree. Jerry take the free already. Referee will call them back. Noel Garvin has been penalised. Again, it's one of those tricky ones where McBride was hanging on, so it's a, a ticking against Noel Garvin. Joe Higgins now looking after Owen Bradley. Bradley just makes space for himself so well. Support from Francis McEldowney. Didn't fancy the shot. McBride on the left boot. Great score. Lovely score from Johnny McBride. The marking just wasn't good enough there from Leach and Derry, building up a little bit of a cushion. Yeah, and again, Owen Bradley had a great input into that score again. Just had that little bit of patience to pick out Johnny McBride. And McBride, who often plays in the middle of the park, takes a score from a difficult uh, difficult angle to put them 5-3 ahead. It's about 10 minutes since Leash last scored in this round four qualifier. Padre Clancy will hope to try and change that. Billy Sheehan fouled. It's Patsy Bradley who was closest to him. Huge lack of movement up in front of the kicker there, if you notice, Darren. That the leash forwards really need to be breaking into space because Derry are so strong physically in the close quarter exchanges. The new man in, Gary Kavanagh. Leash need this. No, another wide. And the doubts will creep back in, and Leash, well, after a very positive start, they've kind of gone back to where they were in the first half against Dublin. Just looking ordinary. Yeah, indeed, and it, but again, we must credit the, the Derry defence. They were under the cosh a little bit earlier on, but McGucky and McCloy, the switch of Lockhart going on to Ross Munley, all of those things have helped, and uh, Father Kelly's had a little bit more freedom in getting forward. Now, Sean Marty Lockhart talking with Paddy Russell. A yellow card coming for Sean Marty Lockhart. It was Paddy Russell doing most of the talking. Yeah, I think in fairness to the umpire at that time, the umpire it was who brought it to Paddy Russell's attention, and whatever happened probably merited a yellow card. But that's good cooperation between lines or between the umpires and referee. Well, we're not quite sure why he got the yellow card. We'll endeavour to find out for you. Derry with the tails up and a two-point lead. Owen Bradley up there with his brother and also Enda Muldoon. Aidan Fenley ran into his own man, McMahon. Kevin Fitzpatrick, Tom Kelly. Leash need him to start pulling the strings in his half-back line, Padraig Clancy. Now, have they got options up front? Billy Sheehan, it's all very tight. Noel Garvin now lets it in, route one. Not a good idea with Donny Brennan unless it falls kindly for him. Kevin McGuckin. Why play a high ball into the smallest man on the park? Oh, indeed, like that was a skyscraper coming into a wee bungalow of a fella. That was a ridiculous pass. Sean Marty Lockhart for Derry. This developing nicely for them. They only lead by two, but signs encouraging. Paddy Bradley, space again. Darren Rooney is goal side. Bradley one way, then the other. He's Rooney really all mixed up at the moment. Bradley. Fergal Doherty. 
Mark Lynch. Now Paul Murphy got one point already. That looks good. Looks very good. Just goes about his work very quietly. And when he gets the chances, he can take him 6-3. Yeah, probably be the, it would be the least heralded uh, and least spoken of of the, of the Derry uh, attack. But he's scored two wonderful points from out of the wing in this half so far. One of their stars in their win against Monaghan. Seems like a long time ago, early in the Ulster Championship. Fergal Doherty. Doherty again switches it over to Owen Bradley. Derry rotating their forwards. Bradley, you could see that time on Rooney. It was the other Bradley he was marking a few minutes ago. Just a reminder of the man of the match details. Here's Paul Murphy. Murphy again tops it way in. Fennelly and Rooney deal with it for Leash. Billy Sheehan. Nicker will have a lot of talking to do at half time. That's a free to Derry. Yes, the middle third of the field that Leash are losing out at the moment. Like the, the pressure that Derry are exerting there is considerable, and the physical strength isn't with a lot of the Leash lads. But the Derry half back line are pushing onto the ball. They're pushing the Leash team further and further back. And there's too big a gap between midfield and the, and the Leash full forward line uh, to actually benefit the Leash team. Paddy Bradley breaking quickly. Has he got the right foot working? Oh, yes, he has. Brilliant score from Paddy Bradley. Had a couple of right-footed efforts earlier on that went wide. They're leading by four and going really well. Yeah, they fully deserve it, actually. They're monopolising possession at the moment. And again, the forwards are now starting to get into gear. Well, do Leash have the ability? They did the last day against Dublin to be able to change things and move up through the gears when they're not playing well. They are not playing well, not been allowed any space up front. Derry motoring along nicely. Tatsy Bradley. That's Francis McEldowney again in an advanced position. Muldoon. Another cross field pass. Two against two. Clucked out of the air by Colin Begley. Todrick Clancy to Tom Kelly. Leash were determined that the Leinster final would not be the end of the road felt they weren't as focused as they should have been. They were very focused for this today, but Derry, just as if not more focused on McGuckin, showing brilliant determination. Yes, that's a case in point indeed, Darren. Two leash men, one Derry man. Derry man just mopped it up. They're far more intense at the moment, applying themselves with much greater application, and leash are being blown off the pitch, actually. And all six of the Derry forwards just moving around and getting space and getting free, and they've got a free foul by Joe Higgins on Owen Bradley yeah, that is a free all right but again we've remarked a couple of times this year that the one thing about Leash they'll be consistently inconsistent not alone from game to game but from half to half and Mikko certainly he'll blister the paint on that wall at half time when he gets him gets him in there I'd say and the Muldoon is getting ready to take this free well a four point cushion would be good for half time five an awful lot better but they've improved in every game Qualifiers, again, they know how to do them, they know how to play in them. Leash haven't performed well in the qualifiers when they've been in them. There's such a contrast in Derry this year and Derry from the early stage last year. They've improved immeasurably, to be honest about it, Dara. And so many players are, are playing at the top of their game at the moment. Paddy Bradley showing again. Bradley should score and does, and they have their five point lead for half time. Could be more. This is worrying for Leash, encouraging for Derry that he's doing this. Again, Bradley's physical strength holding off his man, scoring a fine point. He's starting to kind of, the engine is really oiled now at the moment. Two great scores in the last three minutes. A lot made of the fact that he didn't win an All Star last year. There's been some comments about it. Two additional minutes. He's determined to get one this year. Leash haven't scored since the 17th minute. Billy Sheehan will surely change it. Sheehan, oh. Well, there was a challenge in on him just as he kicked the ball. But really, when you get up there, the attacks have dried up for them in the last few minutes. They've got to take their chances, and they haven't been doing that. 
every time Derry get up there, you just think they're going to score. Here's Owen Bradley. Will it be a six-point lead? Bradley clean through, pulled down, or was he? Referee says he slipped. Hard to know that one, Doris. Certainly, the cornerback Aiden Fenley came across, made contact with him. Maybe there's a half slip. As <laughs> in other games, I, I would have seen a, full, a 13 metre feed be given for that. Tawdrick McMahon, Gary Cavanagh, another one of the five leash players who started in 2001 in the last meeting. Torek Clancy, white flag goes up. They badly needed that. Makes the lead a little more manageable for the second half but they really will have to hit the ground running when we come out again in about 20 minutes time it's just a four point game yeah again good support play that time from uh, Pori Clancy struck the ball well they so badly needed that score I don't think they have scored actually since going back to the I, I think as far back actually is about the, uh, the 17th minute yeah he never scores an ordinary point they're always skyscrapers <laughs> but massively important for Leash. Billy Sheehan. Well, can they get on a real sport and get another one back before half time? No, Garvin running into the space. It was a clever ball through to him. Garvin has to take the challenge of Fergal Doherty. Shot pulled. Free coming up. Ross Munnerly will have a go, will he? Or will it be Chris Conway? Reminds me a little bit of Limerick Hurlers just coming back into it at the very, very end of the half last week. And again, remember the way they played afterwards, Dara. Certainly will lift them. Ross Munnerly is going to have a go. Fergal Doherty has been uh, shown the black card. Mickey Hart of Tyrone, busy afternoon ahead of him. A chance just to take his mind off things by having a look at Derry and Leash. Well, if he pops this one, Derry, there's just a kick of the ball between them, and it's something that I don't think Le uh, Leash have deserved on the evidence of the first half. Three efforts from place balls. He's missed all three. This, a really important kick. Monali off from four double scores Derry lead at half time and from a psychological point of view that's a big moment in this game oh very much so I mean that put them right back into it had they scored that but again that's the, it's not the first time we've said it during the game Dara but why don't they have a place kicker who pick the ball from the ground well Mickey Moran by far the happier of the two managers at half time scored six points without reply in a spell from the 22nd minute all the way up to 34. Derry leading Leash by eight points to four at half time. Let's get some reaction from the camps now. We'll join Jim Carney down on the sideline. We came down the last couple of minutes now. Well, I think we're after coming on a bit, Darren. I think we'll get back into the game. Unusually for Leash teams, you give an awful lot of ball away in the we're first half. On, yes, unfortunately we did, but we'll have to do that at half time. Padre Clancy's point at Leash... Yeah, sorry about that. We have a little bit of a sound problem, obviously, on our interview there. So Derry then have one foot in the quarterfinals. The question is, can they keep it going at this stage, or do Leash have one of those second-half performances that we've seen so often from them when they play with so much spirit? They're going to need it if they get through this particular qualifier. We have analysis in the panel coming up very shortly. I'll be talking to Anthony Toll and Tony Davis. That's after this commercial break. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. Monday night on RTE2. The most dangerous predator of all. Villagers feared him. Baby! What? What? I wasn't going to do anything. Elliot! Monster who feeds on the lowliest creatures of the earth. Baby! Okay. You're not going to just leave me here? Whether you stay is up to you. How are you two seeing each other? You're a great couple. <laughs> Your Desert Island shows, Monday from 9 on RT2.
So good, the Danes hate to see it leave. Only Cadbury Dairy Milk Chocolate has a glass and a half of full cream Irish milk in every half pound. Your happiness loves Cadbury. What are you going for, Hector? I think I'll go for a lucky lad in the 315. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Yes! yes. Come on! Come on! Hey, I got a tip for you. Cheers, boys. I could eat a horse. What? <laughs> horse racing. Let yourself go! Just mark my spot. That's the spot. Did you say that was the spot? Because you kicked from there. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> I bet you whoever drinks more will get more accurate. Hunger has a thirst. Your county needs you. You need the Irish Sun. Keep up with all the latest action in the Irish Sun, Ireland's biggest selling daily tabloid. The Irish Sun, we love it. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. We're at halftime of this uh, first All Ireland Football qualifier here at Croke Park between Derry and Leash. Derry leading Leash by eight points to four. With me in studio, Tony Davis and Anthony Toll. Tony, I suppose that first half was pretty much as you'd expect. Derry did what they're good at doing, and Leash did what they're pretty bad Peter at doing. And, yeah, Peter Miko there with his hands over his head. Yeah. I don't blame him. He'd only jump off the stand at this stage. They are totally inconsistent in what they do. They can get some magnificent points. Ross Munley actually epitomises Leash. He can get a magnificent point. Great build-up, kicks it over the bar with his left leg. And then he has four frees, three scoreable frees, and he kicks them yeah. wide. Very frustrating. No consistency. But if they had got those frees and they had got the goal, then there'd be nothing in the game. No, sure. it's wide open. It's still there for Leash. But they have no consistency whatsoever. But you have to say fair play to Derry. I mean, they oh, do yes. what they do and they do it very sturdily. Yeah. And, and yes, you can't do. argue with that. Yeah. They have the wall of Derry on the halfway line going into the half-forward line. Leash can work up, they can play beautiful pattern football up to the and they kick a huge high ball into poor Donny Brennan inside and he want a six foot ladder to get the ball off Kevin yeah. McCocky inside in the corner. Not the way to play them all, but it's because Derry are putting him under pressure around midfield and in their half back line that makes them kick those balls in. It's not today or yesterday that Paddy Bradley was a good footballer and once again today he's shown his slices home. He's scored some great points, Anthony, in that yeah, first Yeah, he's, he's kicked a few, but he, you know, he's also he's, he's, he kicked a couple of wide as well, which is a bit of a worry. And I think you know, in the first 10 or so minutes, Leash actually defended quite well against Paddy. Here we see him laying the ball off, good one-two there. And you know, that's fairly routine stuff for Paddy Bradley at this stage. You know, he's, he's come much more into the game in the last 15 or 20 minutes and he really is, at, at, at the minute, causing Darren Rooney a lot of, a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Coming back to Leash's play again, you picked out a little sequence here, Tony, where, I mean, they, they did this several times, of getting yeah. good possession of the ball, and then do, you said it yourself a moment ago. Yes, like, they go so play, far, and then they look up, looking for one of the forwards inside to make a run, and all of a sudden, all the options inside are closed in. Here we see a ball in. Now, this is the ball into the corner. Ross Mudley has the ball, being closed down. Hit again to Donny Brennan. He dances around a little bit, left and right, being blocked off. Ross Mundy has it again, high ball into the square. Yeah, any, any high ball that Leash has put in, the very exactly. defensive cope with that yeah. very, very easily. Kevin McLaughlin and Kevin, Kevin McCoy are yeah. very, very good in the air, and there's really sure. no point in Leash They've putting high balls in yeah. there. In fact, the difference between their performance in the first half and the second half against Dublin was the way they played with freedom and openness and kicked the balls down the channel, yeah. quick ball, so Donny Brennan and Ross Mundley yeah. can go on to it. Yeah. They can kick the ball into the square all day long in that full back line, and they love it. It seems to be a Miko's tactic. They don't seem to be able to remember it all day long is the problem. Let's look at some of the goal chances, Anthony. Yeah, there, so they did, a, they did a big, have chances. a big worry for Derek and it's been a, you know, a curse for the, the team you know, really last year and part of this year is that they've leaked so many goal scoring opportunities and they're all coming down right through the heart of their defence very very poor mark in there you know, the wing halves have been supporting Tom Kelly's been getting forward no one's getting back uh, and closing them down and really a wee bit of pressure put on maybe a jersey pull uh, just at the right time and, and that's, a bad, that's a bad miss <laughs> maybe a jersey pull it was a jersey pull <laughs> only a wee slight pull here's, an, here's another chance and again you see this is uh, Tom Kelly as he's been doing he's been causing problems going forward and the whole heart of the Derry defence opens right up here. 
And it's probably the ball just goes a little bit too high there and, and uh, maybe yeah. uh, too much time. And again, a very, very if bad that pass, yeah. if Chris Conway the other side of him yeah. as well if he wanted it. If yeah. that pass was a bit crisper, he'd have finished it, you know. Yeah. But on the other but side of the things, you have in the Muldoon inside in the Derry full forward line. Now, Inda doesn't look fit, actually. He doesn't no, look no. fit. He's laboured a little bit and his sharpness isn't there. But he's a way bigger than his marker. Yeah. So is Mark Lynch inside. So they have a lot more options. The, Derry they have a lot. Options. The only option Leash have, and they've done it quite yeah. well, is when they when they play the ball into space. Yeah, there are times it. in the first half when Donny Brennan and Ross Molney were getting yeah. far, far too much yeah. time yeah. and space from yeah. the Derry defenders. Yeah. Mm. When it's played in like that, they cause Derry a lot of problems. Derry mm. have the option, they can go low to Bradley, yeah. or they can go high to Muldoon. No, Rooney did very well in Bradley for a while. All right, yeah. because it was just a quick ball into him. But when the, when the quick freeze come in, when he when Bradley gets free, there's no back in Ireland with Markham. No, all right, okay, the second half of the game is coming up very soon. That's just after this commercial break. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. Download free GAA video highlights all championship long with Vodafone Live 3G. Jamster Fun Sound Chart. Join the club. Four euros gets you three fun sounds a week for the angry phone. Ring, ring. That's all I do all day. Ring, ring. Does Text B5. Get this. Oops, it's Text B4. Check your text. Hey, girl, you better check your text. Text B3. The original Air 8 Siren. Text B2. Answer the phone. Please word you pick up the telephone. Please pick up the telephone. Text B1 to 57757. The tax man's taken all my dough. And Funny how we wait all year for it to get hot. Lazing on a Just so as we can cool down again. Boomer's original cider. Time dedicated to you. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship. a bit of a dull day in Dublin but uh, obviously plenty of colour here at Croke Park over the weekend and plenty of football action lady. So welcome back to Croke Park half time then in this All-Ireland football qualifier Derry leading Leash by 8 points to 4 I want to very briefly refer to the second match as the Leash team uh, come out the Tyrone-Monaghan match Tony Davis 
thrown up name Ryan McMenamin in the team although there's an issue about his suspension uh, there's this arbitration thing going on at the moment they expect to hear before the game but they've named him at the moment in the team that's peculiar yeah, it's interesting this arbitration came in more or less to stop people from going to taking high court cases exactly, uh, yes. yeah. you know injunctions so that you can yeah. stop the process so you can play now I don't really know what the situation is at the moment he has been suspended he's lost his appeal so I don't really know what the real st yeah. state of, of play is with Ryan but I presume that he's still suspended uh, well, I know he's named on the programme and there's, uh, there's rumour that he's going to start playing. I don't think that's possible. I, yeah. I think if they, if they hand in the list and the ref sees it and sure he's suspended, he can't play. Well, we'll have to wait and see, gentlemen, what's going to happen in the second game. That's uh, coming up at four o'clock as the throw-in for that particular one. Uh, Chris Conway has gone off the leash team, so obviously they're trying to shake things up, Anthony. Yeah, no, no great surprise, I don't think. You know, I don't really recall. Didn't really get into it. I don't recall yeah. him touching the ball at all yeah. in the first half. Um, yeah, you, you know, a question before the game as to whether at least we're up for this and what effect the, the Dublin game had on them. And on the evidence that we've saw to date, it would appear that, you know, that at least are not yeah, really, like Bino, really yeah. in, up yeah. to speed in terms That's of. Bino. Yeah. 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 Interesting to see how he gets on it. Again, a bit like Ender Muldoon coming back from injury, yeah. doesn't look fully up to, to the pace of the game. Yeah. Wonderful talent. Great to see him back playing football, but be interesting yeah. to see if he makes an impact in the second half. For Derry, I suppose you, you want to see them continue to do what they've been doing so well in the first half, and that's dominating the, the breaking ball in, in the middle and getting it into the, the danger men inside. At least really have to up their performance if, they, if, they, if they're going to Yeah, win. and Chris Connery is a big loss. He's their second highest scorer, and he's be, he'd be one of the lads that they're looking to get the scores. No, there isn't a great spread of scores among the leash forward line. Bino, he didn't look fit so far. He seemed that he put all his energy into recovering from the injury and, and kind of left it all there. So it's interesting to see what they'll do in the second half. If they come out with the same intensity they came out against Dublin, fine. But they'll have to move the ball quicker because the way they're moving the ball there, you're just holding them up. And they'll have to get Donny Brennan and Ross Mundy into the game in a running game, more than kicking the high ball in. They'll have to change it and move the ball faster. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's go back again to our commentary team. That's Martin and Dara. Michael, thank you. We uh, understand from the leash dressing room that Bino McDonald, as you've been saying, is in. And it's Chris Conway who's gone off. Bino has only scored one point in this year's championship. And that was scored against Kildare in their Leinster semi-final. Kevin Fitzpatrick has gone off as well. Stephen Kelly wearing number 28 is in in his place so here we go eight points to four Derry lead Leash when they were playing against Dublin in the Leinster final came out and really played extremely well in the first 15 minutes just how much will they be thinking about that free that Ross Munnelly missed or the chance he wasn't able to convert too many steps Paddy Bradley who kicked three points in the first half and also kicked all five of Derry's whites Just have a look, count the steps. Should be four. Now, Johnny McBride has some space. Ross Mullally is tracking back, going with Sean Marty Lockhart, who is his marker. Owen Bradley. To Paddy. Now they've picked out Fergal Doherty. He's free. Doherty drills it. He's not happy with it though. Point number six for yeah. Derry. You have a worrying me for uh, Leash that uh, must be said that they're giving Derry far too much room. Derry players in that move were just given the freedom of the park, so to speak, to launch that kick at goals. Leash's third year to be real contenders in the championship. <laughs> and this is the day that they've got to keep it alive. Derry know all about this from last year that's a free to leash one of the things when you look at the 215s out there at the moment there's some big players on the leash team but Derry physically just seem to be a lot more developed yeah there's a, a notable difference in physiques between the pair of them and probably is down to the weightlifting and to the fact that Derry are just a little bit more in progress and a little bit longer around than their counterparts from leash Bino McDonald frustrated by Sean Marty Lockhart using his considerable strength Kevin McCloy takes the free for Derry. Mark Lynch. Real buzz about him playing for Derry this year. Patsy Bradley. McDonald made the challenge. Jared O'Kane involved again. Again, you can see the natural instinct. He wants to attack. Here's Francis McEldowney. To Paddy Bradley. Derry just 
much more of a total force attack-wise. You can see it. Lee's trying to cover the options. It's Owen Bradley's shot. Ender Muldoon is under it. Fergal Byron there too. Aiden Fenley first to react. Eight points to four. It's not impossible by any means for Leash, but the signs haven't been good for them up to now. A lot of wides really having trouble getting space up here, particularly. Bingo McDonald. McDonald to Donny Brennan out in front of Kevin McGuckin who's on that yellow card, remember. Brennan been forced out the field and fouled by Padraig Kelly. Yeah, I don't think there's any grounds for playing this time. Uh, Brennan beat him out of the ball. Padraig Kelly comes back at him, slaps in on him and again pulls his jersey and I think again he complained to the referee so the referee is such as giving him, I think, a black mark for that. It certainly is. At least wanted to take the free quickly. Referee wasn't having any of it. Tony Brennan drills it in towards Bino. McCloy there, indeed it was Jared O'Kane. Francis McEldowney. Fergal Doherty slipped at the vital time. Stephen Kelly wearing 28. Oh, wide right again. Again, that's a very disappointing return uh, for Stephen Kelly. Good opportunity to put themselves back on the board, put themselves within a the goal of Derry, but they're spawning the few opportunities that they're getting. And again, it must be said there that Derry has so many options that can play the ball low, they can play it high, but they're forced to everything at the moment. There's just that greater urgency to them, that greater flow to them, that greater understanding among their uh, among their players. And Leash have an awful long way to go. Derry still improving with every game they play in the Championship. Oh, now Garvin. Well, he got a yellow card at the very least. He was ticked earlier on. That was a, a clothesline tackle. Well, McBride got straight up to his feet, which well will help Garvin, but not from getting won't prevent him getting the yellow card. <laughs> Kelly takes the free for Derry. Breaks down. Colin Begley. Getting very dark overhead now. Ross Munnelly. Gary Cavanagh. Lots of hand passes. It's broken down once more. Sean Marty Lockhart. Mark Lynch is a big, powerful player. He was knocked to the ground. And that's a free out. Stephen Kelly in trouble. In this case, again, a clothesline tackle, certainly Johnny McBride tackled by Noel Garvin, but to be fair to him, no history on it, so we got, got on with the game. And that's a yellow for Colin Begley. For that latest challenge. Almost six minutes in to the second half. No score so far. Fergal Doherty to Paddy Bradley. Rooney standing in front of him, Ender Muldoon. Been marked by Aidan Fenelit Muldoon, the angle almost impossible. Yeah, it, it was impossible indeed. Again, a very, very difficult score to execute. But again, the life has gone out of leash. They need an injection of a quick score, a couple of scores indeed, to get them back into the game. They're not out of it on the scoreboard, but in, but in terms of general play, they're lagging far behind. Four points down. Clancy, who was last to touch that? It's a leash ball. Scrappy enough start to the second half. Tory Clancy, Ross Munnelly, Paddy Russell having to skip out of the way. Clancy thought about a shot. Sean Marty Lockhart blocked him down and bottled him up. And Leash just not able to cope with the Derry pressure. Owen Bradley wasn't able to handle that bounce. Darren Rooney fortunate. Joe Higgins. Harry Cavanaugh was making the move, Stephen Kelly was too, but it's Ross Munnelly. Now, Kelly, Stephen Kelly, oh, that's a clever ball. Gillis stays on his line, Garvin is in here, goal chance, Billy Sheehan! They've got their goal, only their second in the championship. They magicked it up from somewhere, and they're back to within a point. What a start for them. 
What a start, but the perceptive ball that time, I think it was from Stephen Kelly into space. Garvin's vision, again, a fantastic, a fantastic score. I think it was Billy Sheehan. It was just what the game needed. But again, it was the quality of the pass from, uh, I think it was Stephen Kelly. The weight on it, just delightful. And again, the vision and the composure of Garvin to see Sheehan coming in. Great score, game on. Game on, certainly Billy Sheehan. The simplest of finishes. For the Kerry-born player, very much a leash man now, and their tails are up leash. Big moment, Tom Kelly. Stephen, Stephen Kelly's got it, absolutely superb. What a 60-second spell for leash. The Kellys combining, a goal and a point yeah, level. Get- Again, Tom Kelly coming forward, gives the ball to his brother Stephen, and again, lovely score of the left foot. All of a sudden, the confidence is up, and it's replaced the diffidence that has been so apparent with Leash over the last 30 minutes or so. And now we'll see how Derry will react. Level for a fourth time, eight minutes in to the second half. Doherty got hands to it, all the breaks now going Leash's way, they'll have to capitalise while this is happening, Kelly, Noel Garvin, drills it forward again, it's a high ball to Donny Brennan, he did extremely well, Bina McDonald, Munnelly free over to his left, Brennan, Donny Brennan, has he got it? No. No, again he was kicking off balance that time from a good distance, again unfortunately from a Leash point of view just uh, narrowly went wide, but all of a sudden they seem to be infused with a little bit of confidence. Players are now moving into space, running with a little bit of enthusiasm, something that has been absent for the last uh, for the last while. Not that Mickey Moran or Nick O'Dwyer will ever relax while they're running the line here. The chances created, 8 out of 15, 6 out of 17, at least still creating the chances. Now they're finally starting to take them. Gary Cavanagh hit hard by McCloy. It's gone wide. Both players injured. McCloy down, clutching his head. It was Gary Cavanagh who got the shot away. Well, he's back to his feet. McCloy, who was making the challenge, has come off the worst of the two, it would appear. Yeah, that was a very, very hard collision that time. Again, a headshot that time for McCloy. Came in hard on Cavanagh as he was coming into the tackle. And again, I think came out worse. Let's have a look at what happened. Mickey Moore looking worried. Oh, oh yeah, that's a serious enough collision. Probably a big strong lad though. Probably would get up and play on. But again, quite a sickening tackle. Just his momentum took him in to Gary Cavanagh. It must be said, actually, I think Billy Sheehan now is playing around centre half forward, and Stephen Kelly is rotating between the half forward line, the wing forward, and the and the full forward line. But just overall, there's a better balance to the leash team in the second half, in particular up front. Or to Bank of Ireland man of the match competition, a reminder of the numbers you need. Call us or text us. The prize: a couple of tickets for the All Ireland Senior. Football Championship quarterfinals on August the 13th. Overnight accommodation for two people. The numbers from Northern Ireland as well on your screen. Here is Billy Sheehan. His goal has changed the outlook for Leash. Donny Brent. Again, just look at the amount of Derry players back. They're all swarming back. Donny Brennan. With a sandwich in towards Peter McDonald. Couldn't hang on to it free out. Well, they're not happy with that. Fina McDonald closest to the referee. They're saying it was shoulder to shoulder. I think they have a Patsy case. Bradley. Yeah, I think they have a case in point that time. I think it was Gary Kavanagh came in and gave the shoulder a little bit unlucky to have, had, to have been said to have conceded a free. I thought he won the ball back legitimately there. Bradley just seemed to slip a little bit. He was a touch unfortunate. The leash ran. That's certainly a foul. Paul Murphy hanging on to Podrick McMahon. Ross Munnelly for Bino McDonald. Bino has it. Chance. Great block down. Brilliant defending. Absolutely superb defending. The block was by Jared O'Kane. What a great moment. 
Oh yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful block by O'Kane. But I'd imagine a sharper Bino, a Bino that had a couple of games behind him and a little bit sharper than he was, um, you know, recently would have actually done the side step and actually got in for a goal that time. What a pass for Munley as well, but the yeah, key he, moment, the block. Certainly was, yeah. Again, you could see Munley looking up and uh, picking out Bino that time. But again, we have to credit Jerdick him with a wonderful piece of defending. Now a change in the kicker from the place ball, Ross Munley north from four, Podrick McMahon. It's on the ground, which is good for a start. Let's see, can he put Leash in front? The answer is no. Again, since the goal, it has been all Leash uh, around the middle of the park. I think they're picking up all the breaks, and Derry just need to re-establish themselves, need to just do a little bit of readjusting. Leaders need to stand out now and, and kind of get back into the game. They were so dominant for so long, there's, it has been a shock to the system. But around the middle of the park, like likes of Fergal Patsy Bradley and Sean Marty Lockhart need to start getting back into it. Free taking, a real problem for Leash. Up to 11 wides in this game. Derry with seven. But if they do get a chance from a place ball, who is going to take it? Chris Conway has gone off. Bino McDonald on the left boot. Just one point in the championship. That's gone wide and a long way wide. Yeah, disappointing return that time from Bino, who has been out injured, as we said. And again, just referring to the injury situation, Fergal Doherty is just back after a long time out. I think he got injured in um, in, 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 Uri, in yeah. Uri, actually. And again, maybe just a little bit of tiredness is creeping in at the moment, and he's finding it difficult to get ball around the middle of the park. Crowd increasing all the time, it's still small enough. Francis McEldowney of Derry couldn't hang on. Donny Brennan. Again, they look inside and the marking is a great Gary Kavanagh leash lead what a comeback Derry have yet to score in this second half we've been playing for 14 minutes leash have racked up a goal and two playing very well oh yeah but look at the pass that time from Donny Brennan superb vision superb execution of the pass and when you consider the young lad is only after doing his leaving sir and he's out there with men maybe twice his size that was a wonderful piece of abandon and a wonderful piece of vision by him Gary Cavanagh enjoying his afternoon's work. Derry have to respond, but they're just not getting the ball around here at all. Clancy picking up the loose one that time. It's the likes of Johnny McBride and Patsy Bradley and Paddy Bradley that really need to stand up. McCloy out in front. Ender Muldoon stopped by Cavanagh and Kelly, the two leash subs. Free to Derry. Derry are looking out bicycle now that the, free, that the air has come out of the tyres. They just need to get themselves going again. Oh, they're marking awful here. Owen oh, Bradley completely free to level it up again. But you know we can have extra time in these qualifiers. You just never know. That's the fifth time they've been level. The leash defence just fell asleep. Yeah, and Owen Bradley, since he's gone in on the full forward line midway through the first half, has played very well. He caused Tom Kelly a lot of trouble outfield earlier on. Now he's in on the full, directly in the full forward and playing very effectively. Derry's first point of the second half. Paul Murphy. Francis McEldowney. Johnny McBride. Again, it's Owen Bradley. And once more, he's out in front of Darren Rooney. Mark Lynch. All a minor star. Patsy Bradley to Paddy Bradley. Johnny McBride making a good run ahead of Bradley. Podrick Kelly. While uh, Derry repelled by some fantastic leash defending. They're trying to swarm back and frustrate Derry. It was Gary Kavanagh who made the interception. Noel Garvin. They go short. Billy Sheehan, the leash goal scorer. Corey Clancy, the two midfielders right beside each other. Clancy going for gold, going for the point, but missing. Yeah, and in that case, that time, the ball was so slow coming into the leashful forward line. They were all sucked out of position, and Corey uh, Clancy had the only option available to him was to have a shot at goals. That's Conleth Gilligan, who will replace Paul Murphy. Murphy scored two points, both from play. Hasn't had it all his own way so far in this second half. I know Conor Gilligan came in against Derry at a critical time of the game coming up to the end. It was very effective for them, but it was different, different, uh, different circumstances then to now. They were holding on to a lead then. Now they're trying to push on and um, uh, get a punt of uh, leash. So much at stake today for one of these teams. Championship 2005 will end this afternoon. Well, who will it be? Will it be Derry? Will it be Leash? 
That was Darren Rooney. Unfortunately, he didn't put the ball dead. Owen Bradley. Paddy waiting inside with Joe Higgins. A height advantage for the Derry man and pace two. Colin Bedley. Can't get close enough to him. Paddy Bradley waiting for his moment, waiting for support. Mark Lynch. Lynch for Derry. Sends it over. That's his first point. Two in a row for Derry to back in front. Get a lovely bit of combination that time between Paddy Bradley and looping around Mark Lynch. And again, strikes the ball very well over the bar. I think it's his first score of the game, but so vitally needed for Derry. The crowd really getting involved in this as well. Going one way, then the other. At the moment, it's Derry's turn to be on top. Ender Muldoon. Johnny McBride. Conleth Gilligan, the new man in. Muldoon. McBride. Might have a pop, Johnny McBride. It's not going to hit the target, but a tricky one for the leash defence. It's wide in the end. Owen Bradley was last to touch it. Joe Higgins is struggling. Fell awkwardly, the leash cornerback. Yeah, I think Joe might have got a clatter that time from his goalkeeper, Fergal Byron. Again, very dangerous ball coming across. Maybe it might have been enough communication between the cornerback, Joe, and Fergal Byron, but I think Joe certainly felt that. Really fell very heavily. That's a concern for them actually because again he's been injury prone in the last year or so and that cruciate ligament injury that he's had now seems to be the hip joint that is the, uh, the difficulty and certainly he's one player that Leash need if they're to push on and win this game. Just looking down at the way the scores have fallen of course Derry had those six points in a row in the first half but actually only one point in this match from a free. Now Leash have had their problems with free takers but that was a free from Ender Muldoon. But at the moment, focusing on Joe Higgins. Seems to be OK for the moment. They'll keep an eye on him over the next five minutes. Yeah, again, Derry are keeping their shape very well. They're still keeping those three guys in in the full forward line. The two Bradleys, and I think Ender Muldoon is playing up there quite a bit also. Whereas Leash are more hunting and packs coming out around the middle of the field. and let their, They haven't really got a target man up front. Anybody's game at this stage, Derry leading. Colin Begley. Noel Garvin. Tordra Kelly got hands on that. Conleth Gilligan. Sean Marty Lockhart moves ahead of it. Derry on top just at the minute. Owen Bradley. Really exciting talent, Joe Higgins trying to close his route to goal. Ender Muldoon, three leash men around him, covering most of the options. They probed somewhere else. Johnny McBride, Patsy Bradley, Conleth Gilligan. Johnny McBride making a super run forward. They haven't spotted him. Paddy Bradley, just a real injection of pace from Bradley. It's a long way wide. Johnny McBride had made a super run forward, and the leash defenders were late to track him. Yeah, just for one split second, you're right there, Derek Connick Gilligan. If he'd have spotted them, had Johnny McBride right out in the open with just the goal in front of him. There's a great opportunity there for a split second. This is Billy Sheehan. Sheehan turns back in. Munnerly is to his left. Tory Clancy. Closed down. I don't think he had the confidence to have the shot anyway. Colin Begley. Begley drops it in. Cavanaugh waiting. It's another wide. Yeah, again, we spoke earlier about this. They're just that little bit slow in letting the ball get forward, and they're allowing an awful lot of Derry defenders to get back and crowd the area in front of the goals. Again, just in this case here, ball coming through, somewhat harmless, and again, the ball has gone wide. It seemed to be six of one and a half yeah. dozen of the other, actually. Got a point since coming on. Kevin McCloy is in trouble for Derry. But happy enough to continue. Really has prepared this team well, Mickey Moran. Lots of debate about the players picked, of course, but he's the man who has to see the team and get them to play for him, and they certainly have done that. Well, they have to do more of it. Here's Billy Sheehan, direct running. Gary Kavanagh, they want to get closer. Donny Brennan. Brennan, good pressure put on him. Billy Sheehan had no time to even look at the post. Instinctively knew where they were. 
brilliant score. And again, that's a great score from Billy Sheehan. Again, ball blocked on Sheehan, wins it, doesn't even think about it, just fires and shoots off, uh, instinctively. Fine score, and again, game level. First score in eight minutes after two in a row for Derry, level for a sixth time. Goal and a point for him today. Yeah, he's working so hard at picking up breaking ball around the middle of the park. He's been really inspirational since he was brought in in, in the game as the game was against Dublin. 1-7 to Derry's 10 points. Gary Cavanagh. He was full forward a minute or two ago. Now in his own half-back line, McGuckin doing well against the much smaller Donny Brennan, Enda Muldoon. Unusual ball to Fergal Doherty, making him work a little bit harder than he would have wanted at this stage. Conleth Gilligan, full of running. Gilligan moves it forward quickly. Joe Higgins, oh, lucky. Well judged by Joe Higgins, then straight into Tom Kelly. The bounce could have taken Higgins out of the game, but got to the pitch of it. Here's Billy Sheehan again, gaps down the middle. And he's exploiting them. Tom Kelly. Kelly. No. But now, is there going to be a foul? Oh, yeah, that's a, a bad time, given. Kelly challenged late by Kevin McCloy as he kicked the ball wide. Yeah, that was a bad ch uh, challenge, a late challenge by Kevin McCloy that time. Lost the run of himself, came in, very ill-disciplined, and has given away a free, which will probably be from uh, the 30-metre line. But just going back a moment, uh, Derry are gambling a bit at the moment. They're just leaving the two uh, Bradleys inside the 20-metre line on the other side of the field, drawing everybody back behind the ball, hoping to get the ball to that space, but they're just not getting enough possession at the moment to actually exploit the tactic. So, yellow for McCloy, joining his... Fullback partner Kevin McGuckin in the referee's book from the 13 meter line. They thought about taking it quickly. That was the challenge. Yellow card has been given, and Ross Munnelly has had a terrible time from freeze, not from four. They never say never, but he's not going to miss this. Six times we've been level. Every score from now, crucial with 10 minutes to go. Ross Munnelly goes through that same routine, didn't give it as much air. Leash back in front. And Munnelly has finally been able to convert a free. Derry are taking Enda Muldoon out. Torig Murphy wearing number 25 is in. Yeah, it's no surprise really, Enda Muldoon hasn't been playing with the same effectiveness as he did last year. Again, he's been out with a hamstring injury, maybe short a little bit of confidence, and again, the role he was playing in the last 10 minutes or so around the middle of the park wasn't maybe getting the best out of him. Well, the scoring has been in waves, two in a row there for Leash, before that two in a row for Derry. They haven't scored since the 17th minute. With just under 10 minutes left for play. Noel Garvin, unusual bounce off that, Tom Kelly. Kelly has spotted space and spotted Torrick Clancy. Billy Sheehan running again, he's causing all sorts of problems. Donny Brennan, Gillis out of his line. Brennan got his point. Was there a goal chance there? But at this stage, the point's so important to Leash. 1-9 to 10. Fantastic score by young Brennan that time. Again, great run through the middle by, by Sheehan. Puts the ball that little bit too far ahead of Brennan, who keeps his composure when he's running out of space and kicks across the body. A wonderful score of his left foot. Well, never mind his size. You put him in those positions, he's going to score you the points you need. That's his first today, Donny Brennan. But they now have a two point lead, and what a turnaround! But a long way to go. That was Francis Michael Downey, Conleth Gilligan. Owen Bradley colliding with Joe Higgins, referee saw nothing wrong, both players on the deck, swept up by Noel Garvin of Leith. Joe Higgins, jersey pulled by Bradley, referee lets it go. And Higgins has been allowed to hang on to it for quite a while, Aidan Fennelly. Amazing what a few points will do for you. Popped it twice, yep. elementary air at this late stage and at this level. Yeah, he had too many options on to on and kind of got fused somewhat, didn't take the correct one, popped the ball twice. Lack of concentration. Oh, there's a lack of a lot of things from Mark Lynch. 
Bad mistake to make. They had possession. Good position, and it was kicked straight to Elishma. Yeah, we must credit actually Pori Clancy in the last 10 or 15 minutes or so. He's really come into the game. He stormed into it, feeling some great ball around the middle of the park, and given Leash the leadership. But that goal was the decisive score of the game, and in many ways probably has defined the second half because it, it, from that Leash have got heart and it, it, was, it played magnificent football. Came seven minutes into the second half. We look at the goal again. Podrick McMahon is okay. This was the goal, the pass in was sublime. Oh, absolute delight. And again, the awareness that time of Noel Garvin and the support player, Billy Sheehan, who's like a little Christmas toy. He's going, 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 going. The battery never runs down. Tom Kelly. Aidan Fennelly. Tori Clancy. Noel Garvin. Just keeping it at the moment. Colin Begley. Held up by Conlis Gilligan. Oh, we're back with a start at Garvin. Gary Cavanagh, well taken. Will this be Leisha's day in round four of the qualifiers? Aidan Fenley from right corner back. Fenley still going. Tom Kelly, chance of a point. Great block down by McCloy. Picked up by Ross Monnelly. On the turn, Monnelly. Has he got it? Yes, he has. Hasn't been able to do it from the freeze. But from open play, you give him the chance, he's dynamite. That's four points for Monnelly, a goal between them. A oh, great play again, Tom Kelly involved, had his kick locked down, but Monnelly that time again just got onto that little dynamite of a left foot of his and kicked a wonderful score. But now, around this time, sorry, Martin, go. Derry have created only five chances in the second half. Leash have created 14, would you believe? And it was around this time they lead by three. But think back to the Leinster final. They had a two-point lead on Dublin and they let it slip. Will they be able to complete the transaction today? Well, they're looking good at the moment. And again, Aidan Fenley, who I think was fouled in that case, has come forward repeatedly to help his attack, as has Tom Kelly. And again, there are only two guys playing defence for Leash at the moment. That's Darren Rooney and Joe, uh, Joe Higgins. Here's Ross Monnelly, the man of the moment for Leash. Marking him as Jared O'Kay. Monnelly jinking away through. He just ran out of options and ran into Kevin McGuckin. Conleth Gilligan. This really been put up to Derry now. Haven't scored in 12 minutes. Patsy Bradley. Brave from Tory Kelly. Oh, they've been penalised. A little bit hard on Stephen Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, a bit harsh on him that time, and Derry will be glad of that break. What do you think? Yeah, I wouldn't be. Oh, I don't know. I thought he got the ball away, flicked the ball away yeah. with his hand, actually. And it was a harsh enough call. Almost like Colin Warren and Ross Munley towards the end of the Leinster final. That went against Leash 2. Here's Torrid Clancy. Under five minutes to go. That was intercepted by Kevin McGuckin. Every pass, every time possession is turned over, it's crucial. Derry have to get moving. They're three points behind. That's Torig Murphy. Sean Marty Lockhart. Patsy Bradley. Bradley. Oh, no. Didn't give Paddy Bradley any chance at all. Paddy Bradley, by the way, just one point for him in the second half. Three in the first. Tom Kelly. Monnelly. Made difficult for him by Jared O'Kane. They're having a good battle, those two, in the second half. Here's O'Kane, wearing number 17, taking on Colin Begley, Johnny McBride. Now, Patsy Bradley. Bradley, wide, a long way wide. Let's go down to the sideline and get some news from Jim Carney. Jim? Yes. Yes, Dara, and the news is for Tyrone supporters in particular, and it's been confirmed that Ryan McMenamin will not play in the next match. He, uh, at the hearing last night, we now know that Tyrone lost the case there, that it went to arbitration at 11 o'clock this morning, that there was communication again between Tyrone and the arbitration committee at 1 o'clock today, and now they have delivered their final verdict. Ryan McManaman does not play. Tyrone have accepted the verdict, and the replacement is Joe McMahon, number 23, for Ryan McMahon. Manaman, back with the action, Leash and Derry. Jim, thank you very much, Ross Munnerly for Leash. They lead by a clear goal. Noel Garvin, Derry are going to make a double change any minute. Ross Munnerly, Munnerly to put 
two scores between them, taken by Barry Gillis, it was going wide anyway. Gillis didn't want to take the chance and they want to keep the ball alive. McCloy. Paul Wilson is one of those coming in for Derry. For Rick Kelly. Fergal Doherty, that ankle being seriously tested as we go into the closing seconds of this match. Sean Martin Lockhart up towards Paddy Bradley. Will he be the man? Bradley fouled, free, certain point coming in, or will they go for more? Yeah, I think in that case, Darren Rooney did follow him from behind, but I see Joe Higgins complaining to the umpire because I know Owen Bradley definitely fouled Joe Higgins off the ball that time, and maybe had the referee seen it, the free would have gone the other way. Well, that was right in front of the umpire. Paddy Bradley. Colin Devlin and Paul Wilson will be the two to come in for Derry. Easy chance for Paddy Bradley. Back to within two, and there is still plenty of time. Under two minutes to go. A rare free in this match. Third point from a free. Seventeen minutes into the second half was the last time that... Well, they put two points in a row together. Bradley and Lynch. Yeah, they made a double su substitution actually in the last in the last minute here. Colin Devlin has come in for Bradley as he sent the half forward. Eleven points to one ten. Bradley gone off. Colin Devlin wearing twenty four in. And Paul Wilson replaces. Paul Wilson is in for Todrick Kelly. Reverse of what happened before the throw in. It was Kelly who replaced Wilson. 110 to 11 points. Noel Garvin to put a goal between them. Fabulous. We picked him out before the match as the player to watch. He's had up and down moments, but that is a sublime point. Absolutely brilliant from Noel Garvin. Yeah, but just look at the vision there. Again, Garvin just drifts into position. Again, the confidence to try a long range kick. But just Leash have been that little bit better in the second half. They have outfought and outfought Derry, but the way they have applied themselves, in particular after they have got that goal, if it brings about a win, it has been a fully deserved one. Well, they said they really wanted to beat an Ulster team. They'll have to face an Ulster team if they survive. It's Armagh who wait in the quarter final. Leash have a free in. Yeah, and the other thing too, Darren, must be said, like here, it certainly is a free, I think that time uh, Kevin McGuckingham did pull him back, but one of the things I just mentioned, that was the fitness levels of the Leash team. I mean, they continue to apply themselves to the second half, and they've really run Derry off the pitch. Well, what sort of a team would they be if they played for the full 70 minutes? They didn't play at all in the first half. A well, couple of flashes. Yeah, well, we mentioned that early in the game, like the, the most consistent thing about them is their inconsistency. Goal between them. They've had one point from a free. Beano McDonald. Oh. And certainly if the win today, Mick will, will, will have to address that issue of place kicking. And place kicking from the ground in particular. They'll have to get somebody to do that because they're sporting an awful lot of opportunities that could put them way out of sight in matches. Now, Paddy Russell just over telling his linesman how much time there will be to be added on. We're in stoppage time now. We haven't seen the board to tell us how much. Of that there will be, but there's a goal between them. Leash have just kicked away another very scorable free. One more wide, their wide's tally today, 15 to Derry's 10. And it's just boiling over a little bit of anything that will suit Leash now at this stage. Paul Wilson, there'll be three additional minutes, so plenty of time for them. Three minutes to get three points, and four extra time. A minute of that played already. Colin Devlin, start of the last day against Limerick. Making it difficult for Ross Mullaney. They're all back there. Devlin. White. Yeah, that was a ball that needed to keep in play, actually. He should have been dropped in a little bit shorter to Paddy Bradley if he was making a run for them. But that's a, uh, certainly a score that they would have needed to get. I notice actually the umpire at the moment is calling the referee's yeah. attention about something that happened there. As his left arm outstretched and the referee is in to have a word. Leash are going to make one more change. Mark Dunn wearing number 30 will be in. Now the referee Paddy Russell has spoken to his umpire and where is he heading? Heading over towards Porig Murphy and Aidan Fennelly. Well they didn't spot the Joe Higgins incident a couple of minutes ago. 
The other cornerback, Aiden Fennelly, now gets a yellow card. Yeah, he said some match though, it must be said. Uh, in particular as an attacking force in the second half, but he and Tom Kelly have driven forward repeatedly into the Derry defence, created openings and br that brought about scores. There's Mark Dunn. And the player to go off is Donny Brennan. Scored a memorable point and Mark Dunn. Yeah. A big reception from the Leash fans here. As is Brennan as he heads off. Tough moments in the first half, but some great oh, some great moments in the second yeah. half, Darren. He's such a refreshing little player to watch. And what I love about the Leash team is the level of skill that they bring to the table. I mean, they rely so much on skill and what's good in football to actually bring about uh, you know, their displays. The qualifiers haven't been kind to Leash in the last number of years since they were introduced. You think of the Tyrone match last year when they had all those injury problems, they were absolutely hammered by a rampant Tyrone team. One or two injury problems in the build-up to this game today, but Miko, there were no excuses. They had to perform, they didn't in the first half. They've really upped it for the second half. And those three additional minutes are now up. The referee will allow a little bit more time, but it's down the wrong end from a Derry perspective. Paddy Russell still hasn't looked at the watch. Oh, yes, he has, it's over. Leash have beaten Derry and they're through to the All-Ireland quarter-final where they'll play Armagh just like they did in 2003. Yeah, fully deserved, it must be said. Great character in the second half, heroic display from every one of them. They were so poor in the first half but really applied themselves tremendously well in the second half. Went about their business, got the goal at a critical time eight minutes into the half and from that point on really they went into overdrive. Great tribute to Mick O'Dwyer for getting the team to the levels of fitness that they displayed in the second half, for playing the enterprising football they had in the second half. And I'll tell you one thing, I look forward to seeing their game against Armagh. Yes, and they certainly outscored Derry very convincingly by what? One, seven to three points in the second half. Very impressive stuff from Leash. Their defence really tightened up. Billy Sheehan with the goal, the key moment in the second half. Leash are through to the last eight. To meet our man, Leash 111, Derry 11 points. Yeah, thank you very much to our commentary team there. Well, I tell you, Tony Davis and Anthony Toll are here with me. First, I suppose, Anthony Toll, we have to say commiserations to Derry on that one. Had their chances in the game, just didn't work out in the end. Yeah, they did. Leash seemed to have yeah. the legs a bit in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Well, I think, it, you know, if you look at the, the way the second half developed, you know, the early part of the second half, Derry had, had a bit of possession. They kicked three very, very bad wades early on and they really needed those to go over and it was it was the goal that, that Leash got that brought them into the game and really sparked their revival and really from then on it was all Leash in the second half they dominated scored well, out, outscored Derry yeah. won seven to three points and I think for me the, the, the key thing was that Derry were wiped out in midfield in the second half of that game yeah. in terms of kickouts Leash won 14 out of the 20 kickouts Derry only won six so if you don't have possession of the ball it doesn't matter if you have two or three Paddy Bradleys in your forward lane you're not going to get the scores and that's what I think what decided the, the sure. game for me you know OK, we'll hear from Tony in a second. Well, first of all, we're going to hear from Mick O'Dwyer, the jubilant leash manager. Mick, congratulations. Congratulations, Mick. You've done it again. You take your team a step forward. What a team you have. What a second half team leash is. Yeah, we seem to play our best football all the time in the second half. There's no doubt about that. But we were in there in the first half as well. I think we, had, we, we, we should have scored 2-5 in the first half, which we missed. But I mean, it just shows you the character of the team, the way they were able to come back and get the scores when they were really needed in the finish. I mean, that was a great finish. We, think we got some great points there at the end. I suppose the changes we made at half-time and the, the other few that we introduced made the difference. But overall, I mean, it was a great team win, which is the most important thing of all. And we won by missing a lot of scores. So, I mean, that argues well for the future. There's no doubt about that. And we hope to go on now. We'll be meeting Arma, I think, in the next round. That's going to be another tough one again, I can assure you. But I think that seemed to manage us, to get us with all the northern counties. This is three years in a row now. We've played nobody. Only northern teams, when we get out of wherever, Leinster or whatever it is. They like to give us northern teams, I think. Yeah. For forgive us for being analytical so early, Mick. But, I mean, the next day, you'll be looking to start better, I'm sure, and also maybe to kick more of your freeze. Yeah, that is true. I mean, we started well enough for the first 10 minutes today, but then we died. But we missed so many chances, so many frees, and we got two goaling chances and didn't put them away. So they're all things we'll have to correct if we're to go further in the championship. But Mick, your, your men have done you proud today, no doubt about that. And indeed, both teams, I think, provided superb entertainment. I think it was a great game of football. It was an unbelievable football. Derry played very good football out there today. 
But, you know, we managed to hold our team in up front, and I think that, that was the difference between victory and defeat today. Well done to you, Mick. Very, very well done. And with that, back to Michael Lester. Jim Carney, thank you very much indeed. Well, I think Mick O'Dwyer put his finger on it. They were a very good game of football. Leash missed a lot of chances. And Tony Davis, you know, I'm glad I'm not a Leash man because <laughs> I've been in oxygen tent now after watching them play. They're, they're very frustrating to watch for a supporter's point of view because uh, they didn't play really in the first half. They did create the chances. They missed them. Took Missed four scoreable frees, Ross Munley missed four scoreable frees. In the second half, they created the chances, but was Billy Sheehan's goal was the crucial point into it. I think it was at the 41st minute, crucial time. Stephen Kelly came up and got a point, and then their tails were up. I think the next day they'll play into the canal in both times, because yeah. against Dublin in the first game, they played up this way as well. But they played great, like Leash play football. Any team Mick O'Dewar is involved with play football, and these young lads play football. Now, if they someday... It's a bit like me or oh, the last day getting 19 was. Someday they're going to take all their frees. Yeah. They're going to get, they created two goal opportunities and they missed them. And maybe it have happened against Armagh, but it's a totally different proposition between playing Derry and playing Armagh. They should probably just give Armagh a five point lead and just start in the second half and save them the trouble and the energy and so forth. Billy Sheehan's goal, Anthony, this really turned the game for yeah, yeah. They needed this score this day. They did indeed. It was looking grim for them for a long time, but um, it, it, in fairness, they kept plugging away. And, and what was hurting Derry was that, you know, we said at half time about fellas making runs, lit runs from, from the half back line right through the centre of the Derry defence. And look, this is just terrible mark. And his run isn't picked up at all. A great, great ball and, and uh, quick hands here and a, an easy finish for Billy Sheehan. But, it was, it was just really a thing that's been haunting Derry for this past couple of years is the, how, how many goal-scoring opportunities they present to the opposition. Yeah. Um, it would have been interesting if they had have prevented that goal from going in, but really that was what brought Leash uh, yeah. to life and brought them into the game. And they footballed their way through it. Like, there was a good movement, a good ball in. Yeah. He made sure you should see him clapping his hands before that ball yeah. went in. Give me the ball, yeah. went in and finished it. No. Up to this, they were hitting high balls into yeah, the square. Yeah, they did which that. Was yeah. confusing. Wasn't working. Wasn't working. Yeah. They actually kept doing that, even, even yeah. after getting the break. It was confusing because, yeah. like, Kevin McCloy's a big man in there. Yeah. You know, a big man. Kevin McGuckian's a big sure. man. Like, yeah. McGuckian had a good game now, mm -hmm. you know? But and those high balls the, didn't suit Donny Brennan and those lads. The Derry defence, the, the full-back Kevin McGuckian and Kevin McCloy played played fairly well. They did, yes, but they did, what, yeah. what hurt Derry was the runs that were coming from deep. That's the yeah. one. Really, really, that's all you can do. Whenever teams put so many men behind the ball, yeah. there's little sense in kicking mm -hmm. it in. And you have to run it, and that's really where, where they yeah. brought yeah. about their... Even revival. after that goal, like Derry did come back. Well, they did come back. I mean, like there was a Mark Lynch uh, point yes. uh, yeah. after that that actually gave Derry the leash back, uh, yeah. the lead again back into it. Yes, he got a very good score, 52nd minute. Derry plays coming back into the game. Uh, it was 1-6 to 9 points. And the next score was going to be vital. A bad wide by Leash, and the next score was Mark Lynch's score to make it 1-6 yeah. to 10 points. Now, that was a crucial yeah. score. Getting them back in, they never gave up. Even though they were losing a lot of the ball at midfield, uh, here we see the play. This is the one that gave the, Jerry the lead back again. Yeah, yeah, good, Mark good, good, yeah. good crossfield ball. And good good ball. Yeah. Paddy Bradley uh, did well here. Held it up and, and waited for, for the outlet. And uh, it was a great point by Mark Lynch off his left foot. But, that you know, really after Derry got that, got themselves back into the game and back into the lead. They, they didn't push it on. They didn't really yeah. drive on to win the match. I said Billy Sheen got the next score. Yeah. But Paddy Bradley in the second half was largely anonymous. Yes. Yeah, I know if, they were losing if, at midfield. Yes, they were losing at midfield yeah. and they, yeah. weren't, they weren't getting the ball into yeah. them. You know, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's, it's very, very difficult if you don't have yeah. the ball. You can't do anything with it. Well, the next one, know. Billy Sheen got the next score and they yeah. drove on from that. That was the end of it. Mentioning Billy Sheen, our RTE Bank of Ireland Man of the Match selection from that game is indeed Billy Sheehan, the leash number 12. He got that crucial goal and a point as well that was very important to them. He's talking to Jim Cardi now. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. Well, it's not the first time we've had the pleasure of presenting a Man of the Match award to a Kerry footballer, but of course, Billy Sheehan is now with his adopted leash. He's a proud leashman, and after a brilliant display today, it's our pleasure uh, to present the uh, RTE Sport uh, Bank of Ireland uh, Sunday game Man of the Match to Billy Sheehan of Leash for a brilliant second half. Now, Jerry Griffin, manager of Bank of Ireland, Port Arlington, who is also a very happy and proud liege man here today, has done the honours. Billy, congratulations to you on this award. I know that it'll mean something to you, maybe tomorrow or the day after. For now, you're just relieved, and I know you're a very tired man, because again, again, you ran every blade of grass out there in Grove Park. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, well, no, we're just uh, delighted with the result. We, it was the same as a kill there again. We were going in and all the paper talk, etc., and all the pundits were saying that Derry would be the, the favourites and we're underdogs, and that's the way we like it. And to be honest about it, no, it was like the Offaly game and the Dublin game was back to the wall at half-time. Fair play to 
one to even 20 we brought on, was it four subs, sorry, 119, everyone came on and done a job and fair play to all lads. And the goal, Billy, just talk to us a little bit about the goal, because, I mean, this is a Leash team that people say can't score goals. Uh, well, to be honest, what did my name would be in the paper for getting it, but really, not, Noel Garvin done all the grafting, he just gave it to me and I just was on the end of it really to tap to the net, but uh, it was a good team move overall and I'm just happy to get it really. Yeah, and Noel played a great game too, and if I could just ask you, Billy, about a couple of other players, I mean, you know, in the media here, we just love Joe Higgins, we regard him as one of the be- finest defenders that we've seen in our time, but Darren Rooney and Aidan Fenley, those two were just fantastic out there today. Well, to be honest, I don't know uh, people in each regard Aidan Finley as one of the best cornerbacks in the country, and I certainly do myself. Having played down in Kerry, he's definitely m- maybe as good as all the boys down there. And Darren Rooney, we got a lot of criticism after the the uh, Dublin game, and Adam Brogan only scored a point off him, which was very harsh on him, but he came out today and proved everyone wrong. Martin pa- Paddy Bradley, who's probably the best forward in the country in form at the moment. Fair play to Darren, delight from too. OK, and congratulations to you again, Billy. Look forward to Lee seeing the next day. You and your supporters bring great colour and excitement to Crook Park. And with that, back to Michael. Thanks very much. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Thank you to Jim Carney again. Congratulations to the one and only Billy Sheehan, our man of the match from that game. And congratulations also to Frank Britton from Clonin and Clonbell. I know it very well down there in County Tipperary. He has won our man of the match uh, from the first game, or competition from the first game. Two tickets to the All-Ireland quarterfinals for next weekend. Overnight accommodation in Dublin. Also into the draw for tickets for the All-Ireland final. Let's turn our attention now to the second game with the panel here, to Tony Davis and Anthony Toll. Uh, coming up, of course, we have Tyrone Monaghan. We talk talked about this arbitration thing, about the Ryan McMenamin thing, yeah. Tony. He's not playing now, as Jim Carney was telling yes. us there. No, that it's all a little bit distracting going into a game like this. Or can Tyrone afford to be distracted in this game? No, they can't. I don't think anybody can afford to be distracted. Like, Derry were warm favourites for the first game, and we saw what Leash did, even though they always had the potential. Now, in this game... Look, you want to go into the game thinking of football, thinking of your own game and trying to do the simple things well uh, and win the game. All this is a distraction. Whether beforehand Mickey Hart had told him, look, he's gone, forget about him, concentrate on your own game. But he's gone now and we see Joe McMahon in, in cornerback uh, yeah. instead of Ryan McMillan. Now, Ryan is going to be a loss for them because really their full back line up to this year has been struggling. Now, Chris Lawn has done very well there, but I'm sure he would like Ryan in there beside him just to steady him down and just to make sure that there's no, all those breaking balls are picked up. And Ryan's a good man marker as well, you know, and I'm sure he would have been on Tomas Freeman. You know, he'd be a big loss to him. Oh, sure, there's no doubt about that. How do you see it, Anthony? Well, I think it's, it's going to take a huge effort from Monaghan. You know, we really even, despite all the, the problems and the issues with, with Ryan McMinimum, you still expect Tyrone to win this game and, and to win it yeah. comfortably. It's going to, you know, Monaghan football, you always associate that with good, hard, honest, gritty football and fellas giving 100% and they're really going to have to play you know, above themselves today if they're going to compete with yeah. their own. Yeah, there's no doubt about it though. Like, from Monaghan's point of view, they don't have a lot to lose going into this game and Monaghan, they're a kind of a country when they get into games like this, they give it a lash and they won't apologise to anybody for it. Yeah, they're without doubt the most improved team in Ireland this year. Like, from the start of the year, uh, I remember they drew with Clare in the first league game they lost by six points to Fermanagh yeah. and after that they went on, a, on a, a huge roll so they're coming from a very low base and to get even here today to be playing football in August is a great result for them now playing football in August I, I'm looking here at the programme and look, see the name Brian, Brian McGuigan now he makes a huge mockery of all this training during the winter and running up the side of mountains and all these weight training because mm-hmm. he headed off for a I tan know. to Australia yeah. for, for the year came back now the likes of Brian, he's only getting match fitness now. And yeah. he's vital to Tyrone. He's yeah. one of these ball winners and he picks out players inside and Owen Mulligan in full I forward s- against Stephen Eddy. They have a huge amount of talent in the forward. They do. I suppose if you start with the kind of pedigree that McGuigan has in the first case, you could afford to give a few months of training to the others. Uh, no, okay, it's time now to hear the view of one of the managers in today's second match. That's Seamus McAnini. He's the man in charge of Monaghan, of course. He's talking to Jim Carney. Well, it's a big day for Monaghan football. Uh, you know, we've come a long way in the last uh, nine or ten months. Um, you know, what I'm expecting here is that if we play 19 or 20 players, so we get 100% of them. And if they give us 100% uh, for the full time that they're on the field, well, we can't expect any, anything more. You know, we, we don't underestimate this Tyrone team. They are all Ireland champions two years ago, and they're uh, a top-class team. They're one of the best teams in the country. From match to match, Seamus, what was the level of ambition that you saw in your team? Did you see that they wanted to be up there with the Tyrones and the Armaghs and the Derrys? Yeah, well, we, we see Tyrone and Armagh and Derry as the big three in Ulster and, you know, everyone strives to be the best they can be. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, we know that there's a big gulf uh, between ourselves and Tyrone back at the beginning of the year and, uh, you know, we think we've made big progress and I suppose the measure of progress we've made will be decided out here today. Now, looking at your players in the dressing room now, just before the game, Seamus, are they composed? Do they feel, you know, that this is their venue, that this is their day? 
Oh yeah, they're very calm. You, you know, we have no doubt in our own mind. We we believe that we're good enough to be here. Yeah, we have every right to be here. And uh, you know, we've prepared really, really well, really well for this game. And at the end of the day, you know, it's, are you good enough on the day or are you not? And finally, Seamus, good news for you is that one to fifteen, you're as per the selection. As per program, uh, everybody fully fit. We've had absolutely no injury worries, and uh, Rory Woods has taken the A another position, and we're delighted that we're picking up a full team. It's great to be here in the month of August playing Championship football and carrying no injuries. Yeah, that's Seamus McEnany, the Monaghan manager, brother of Pat, of course, the referee. By the way, Mickey Hart in his interview had spoken about the Ryan McMenamin thing, which has changed in the meantime. So uh, we take it that Mickey is feeling good going into this game as well. You've been looking at one of the Tyrone players, looking at Tyrone, one of their players in particular, Sean Cavan, a very important player on the middle of the field for them. Yeah, Sean is crucial because Conor Gormley isn't really a midfielder. Now. So, Sean, they really want a big game from Sean. Sean's main thing for them as well is going forward. Like, he's one of these players that has a huge engine, and at times, if you had two other midfielders, he'd be the type of fellow you play wing forward and let him come out to midfield and drive forward. Here we see them getting a, getting a, a point against Cavan. Now, the last day, he set up, he, it just went wide there and all, but he creates mm. quite an awful lot of opportunities of running deep. And I'm sure Monaghan in their team talks before the game will be, before the game starts, he'll be mentioned quite a lot. That actually went over the bar. I don't think he meant to do, but it went over the bar. Yeah. But he's one of these guys Goals win your games, and he, he's got a huge amount of important goals for Tyrone down the years. He, he has done, Tony, but you know, for me, he hasn't reached the level of performance that, that we saw from him last season. Over 650 first class matches. Ginola with the cross for Newcastle. Now, off goes McBarmer. Newcastle having to retreat here. McAteer is wide of it. This is McAteer now. Too close to Cernicek. We have, what, four or five players converging on the goalkeeper. We're now into the last three minutes of the game. 